What's up internet? Welcome to Sega Break. This is Linzer22, so let's talk Sega. I've done two episodes of this already on my personal channel, but I made a channel specifically for this podcast because it was definitely different from the videos I make. It's more of a long form show. Things are slower. There's less editing I have to do. And I just love talking about Sega, so I just felt like it deserved its own channel. Now, if you're a fan of Sega and you're a content creator and you like to get involved with the community, um, I would like to actually make Sega Break a community podcast type thing. So if you want to get involved, please let me know. Uh, I think I'll make a a Discord server just so that we can group together and discuss what episodes we'll make. Besides, it's only episode three, so there's a lot of growing to go with this podcast. Now, Sega is having a sale right now on Steam. I looked at it and I plan on picking up a couple of games. One being Binary Domain. It's a game I've always wanted to play. And um, Two Point Hospital, I think it's called. I played that on Game Pass on the Xbox and I really wanted to play it on a computer. And right now it's on sale on Steam, so I plan on picking it up. Yes, I know that Game Pass Ultimate is for PC, but I enjoyed it to enough to where I want to pick it up. Which is which surprised me because I've always thought that once I play a game on Game Pass, I'm probably never ever gonna buy those games. But here I am actually contemplating buying a game that's on Game Pass. So maybe Microsoft having Game Pass and selling those products is a good idea. I would have never guessed. Now to start these podcasts, I usually go on rambling like I am doing now, kind of talking about what's going on and all that stuff with uh, everything. But I think since this is the third episode and I haven't done this in a while, I'm just going to go straight to the topics. So some of the topics I'm going to be talking about are Virtual Fighter is coming to eSports, the Yakuza movie, Football Manager 2021, Fantasy Star Online 2, New Genesis, the Console Wars documentary, some Sega Mini possibilities, and let's talk about maybe Microsoft buying Sega. Are they? Are they not? Well, everyone keeps talking about it. So Tokyo Game Show has passed, and actually for a while now, but I'm recording this much later. So I decided to talk about all these things that they've announced. Although there wasn't much. I, I know that a lot of people are anticipating some Sonic news, but they've kind of announced what they're going to announce, and Sonic was nowhere on there. So you shouldn't have expected that. Although we did get some things that was kind of unexpected, like Virtual Fighter is returning. It's um, they, sh- they showed it as Virtual Fighter cross esports project or something like that i i don't know if it's a new game or if they're just gonna tweak the old game to work as an esport or work better as an esport or maybe they are gonna build a brand new game um if you're a fan of the franchise it looks like it's making a comeback another bit of news is yakuza movie yeah yakuza you know sega's big franchise right now yeah it's pretty much their best franchise that they're developing and it's a, it's a really good game if, if you've um, not played it because you're sick of seeing them promoting Yakuza. I, I, I gotta say, it's a good game, and I think everyone should at least give it a shot. Especially since it's on Xbox Game Pass, you pretty much have no excuse not to try it out. But what can we expect from a Yakuza movie? I'm not sure. I, I think it's a, a big project that's going to be shown overseas, so maybe it'll be in English. I don't know. It's probably going to be made in Japanese and then um, translated over here. I'm not sure. I have no idea where they're going to go with this. I hope they don't bring in... I know it's going to sound weird, but I hope that they uh, cast it correctly. That portrays the the original vision of the games. I hope they don't try to Americanize the, the this franchise just so that I, I don't know it works better in the American for the American audience. I think that would ruin it. But I think the... Uh, I think I think he's the creative... He's this, like the CCO or something like that of... Seg at the moment, he's actually the guy who created the Yakuza brand. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I should probably have notes, but my first time doing this in a while, so bear with me. But uh, yeah, he created Yakuza, and since he's in charge, I think he has a lot of um, say in how this movie's gonna turn out. So I look forward to seeing that movie. They've also announced the Football Manager 2021. Now I know nothing about this game, except that it's coming to the Xbox line of consoles. And the reason for that is because since Football Manager is actually on Game Pass for PC, it looks like Microsoft has been clamoring for it to come onto consoles as well to, you know, beef up their their um, Game Pass catalog. 
and that's pretty much why it's on the xbox consoles and not the playstation consoles in fact they they've confirmed that in an article which i will link inside of the description down below so you guys can take a look for yourself so if you're excited for that and you have an xbox look forward to that although i do believe that a slimmed down version is coming to the switch and uh, mac and phones and stuff like that android but so yeah we'll see PSO 2 or Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis was also shown and to be honest I don't have much experience with Fantasy Star Online 2. It looks really cool but I get easily overwhelmed with all these MMOs. This one is going to have an open world for the MMO and you're going to be able to take your character from this version to the old version to swap in, swap in between, no problem. It looks really cool. I really want to like Fantasy Star Online. I look at it, it looks really fun. And I played the original ones, and those were really fun as well. I don't know why, I just get overwhelmed. Maybe I'm just getting old and I just cannot get, you know, into or figure out these newer modern games. Now, the Console Wars book that was made, I believe, it released in 2014, um, a documentary that was made in, during the same time that the book was being written has finally released on CBS All Access. And I've watched it, and I gotta say, I actually made a video about this, so I'll link that down below. I liked it. It generally was good. It just felt like it was rushing to get to the the finish. Like, they were just trying to hurry up. They only had a limited limited amount of time to actually have the, like, to have a runtime on this. Um, I really wish that this was a docu-series. But as I mentioned in my video, we later learned that this is actually going to get a TV series as well. So I'm okay with that because the TV series, I would want that to be portrayed longer because I want to see every encounter, every conversation that was made that was impactful in this. And I hope that that has a really good narrative. Another thing to talk about is Mario 64 has been ported over to Dreamcast. Well, it's not the original Mario 64. It's the reverse engineered Mario 64 where a group of individuals who are very clever, they re reverse engineered the Mario 64 and 64 game, um, basically making their own source code. So they use this source code and they've been plopping it onto everything. I believe they even put on the Raspberry Pi, but I haven't taken a look at that yet. But it's, it's actually pretty interesting and a lot of interesting things are, are happening in games these days. I mean, we've seen Sonic show up on Super Nintendo hardware and I believe they, they did the same process or a similar process. So this is really cool I, and I just like love seeing stuff like this. Now before Tokyo Game Show was actually going to start, the biggest rumor that was going around was that Microsoft was going to buy Sega. And I mean, we can go on and on about why that's probably not going to happen, but it's still fun to discuss. So the ultimate question other than will they buy them is should they buy them? Now, Sega is owned by a holdings company called Sammy, or I guess its full name is technically Sega Sammy. I'm not sure which name comes first, but you get the idea. Many people don't agree with the way that this company has been handling the Sega IP, and many of the prominent people of Sega have left. Only a few faces are still there. And I believe this, the, the guy running Sega in general is the son of the person who started Sammy, but I may have the information incorrect. Um, go ahead and correct me on that because that's some information that I'd like to have on me. Many people believe that if Microsoft were to actually buy Sega, then a lot would change. For one, Microsoft would utilize all of their brands, or I guess that's what some people believe, and Microsoft has the infrastructure to release these mini consoles on a much grander scale. Sega is a much smaller company. Microsoft is obviously much bigger. They have more partnerships and all that stuff. That being said, Sega is, or I guess Sammy Sega, is not a small company. It would be, it would have to be a big investment in order for Microsoft to just go in and say, I'm gonna buy the company. Now, I guess they could try to get a deal where they only get Sega IP. But I think at this point, so much of the Sega IP is already infused in the company as a whole. So I, I, I don't know. I, well, actually, you know what? Maybe they could make a deal where Sega Sammy has a lifetime license so they can keep using the character. They just don't technically own it anymore. I don't know. This could all be very interesting. Now. Originally, I didn't like the idea. I thought, let Sega run Sega, but it, 
after all these years and learning a, a bit that Sammy is kind of like um, a pachinko company, or not exactly, they're much bigger than that, but most of their money comes from like casinos and hotels and pachinko and all that stuff. And Sega is just kind of a portion of that. It kind of worries me. What if they want to focus more heavily on their gambling side? I mean, let's look at Konami. They literally don't want to do anything with their video game side. So they have IP that people really want games from. But Konami does not want to make the true investment. They'd rather just put it in mobile games. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Sega should get acquired or... Yeah, just what do you guys think? I'll, I have to point out that because Sega is a really big Japanese company and Microsoft is a really big US company, there is going to be some tension between those two getting, um, I don't know, merging in some way. What I mean by that is there's probably regulation laws where a big US company cannot take over a a large Japanese company or, or, or vice versa. So I could see that being a thing where it's not going to happen just because the government won't let it happen. And it, and it makes sense. I mean, we don't want a monopoly. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today is another thing that I'm actually making a video of right now. It's already recorded. I'm just currently in the process of editing it. So look out for that. I will leave a link in the description down below. So yeah, enjoy that. But it's basically the Sega Minis. So Sega has confirmed that they are interested. So they haven't confirmed they're making it yet, but they are interested in maybe making a mini version of the Sega SG-1000 or the Sega Dreamcast. The SG-1000 was never released in North America. It's, oh, it was only released in um, Japan. And I believe the games were backward compatible with the Master System over in Japan. So. Many people think it's the same thing, or maybe it is the same thing. Um, either way, I've never played an SG-1000 because I don't have the money to put down on an old SG-1000 in some games. But there is one game I'm really interested in playing, and that's a game from Naka, Yuji Naka. It's his first game he ever made. I think it's called Girls Garden. It's actually pretty fun. You guys should check it out. I've always wanted to use the controller. My dream is that one day there'll be a USB controller where I can plug into my RetroPie and play it. But unfortunately at the moment, that's not the case. So if this SG-1000 were to come and it came with a USB controller, well, I wouldn't need to plug into my RetroPie at that point because I have an SG-1000 mini. So I'd be excited for that. And then there's also rumors of the Dreamcast Mini. And as I mentioned in my video, that's going to be huge. There are so many people who love the Dreamcast. I'm one of them. I love the Dreamcast. I, I can't say it's my favorite console, but it's, 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 it has an interesting history. Its catalog is, is great. There's a lot of great games on there. You, if you pick one up with a with handful of games, you're set. Like, that's good. And it's a, it's a console that, that pretty much took them out of the console market so uh, that's why I think it's an interesting story but if they were to get a mini console that was the Dreamcast mini this would give people an opportunity to experience it who are maybe afraid to experience it and something that's interesting is that it has a VMU its memory card is not your average memory card so I wonder if they would utilize that and I do believe that they overmade the VMUs. So there's a lot of VMUs out there in the market. The last time I checked, you can get a VMU. Let me see, I checked it like a couple years ago. Um, it, it was like about like $10 or something like that. It was like ridiculously low for something that's retro. Probably is a lot more now because, because COVID made a lot of retro prices skyrocket basically. I mean, right now, if you have retro games and you've been wanting to get rid of them, you should have done it because they, they're just going up. And honestly, it's probably going to go down to a more realistic price at some point. But yeah, so look forward to those two Sega Minis. They probably won't be coming until 2022 because they kind of made a statement that it would be worldwide release. And if it is a worldwide release, they would need more time to actually get everything implemented so they can sell it worldwide. If you look at the... The uh, Game Gear Mini and the, what's it, Astro City Mini, or well, actually the, the Game Gear was a micro, um, those were only made domestically. If you look at the price, it does look kind of high, and I think that's because 
they're not making as much. There's, um, what's that term? Economics of scale, yeah, they're not implementing with these because they're only gonna be made domestically because it's gonna cost a little bit more to make each one. Now with the, the uh, two minis that I discussed earlier, because they're gonna be worldwide, because they're gonna take two years to actually develop them, they can take into account economic, uh, you know what I mean, economics of scale, there you go. So the price will be probably more competitive and enticing. Hopefully they have M2 working on these, which by the way, this comes right after the news that M2 is no longer working on Sega Ages, which I also made a, made a video about, so I'll leave that down below. I didn't realize I was gonna touch on a couple of videos. So on my channel, yeah, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of Sega videos, so that's probably why. I mean, it's no secret that I'm a, I'm a Sega fan. And I'm sure if you've listened this far, you're a Sega fan yourself. So if you've, if you've enjoyed this podcast, go ahead and subscribe. I might make this available on iTunes somehow. I'm not sure. I kind of want to see where I go. This is all in the um, laboratory phase or... You know, I'm experimenting. I'm kind of seeing where this goes. I want to get more people involved. So if you like Sega and you are a content creator, I, you can totally let me know what channel you have. I can see your content. And if you want to maybe put in like a two minute clip of you reading up some news from Sega, please, I, I can't do everything, right? I'd like to make Sega break a community type of podcast where we have a bunch of people who are fans of Sega because I know I'm not the only one and I'm not the only one that, that just reads up on Sega and goes on the Sega subreddit every now and then and reads the Sega news because I see it I see it everywhere I see all of you guys and I see what you guys want and I think I think uh, this could possibly be a fun platform for us to use but that m marks my first try at this well technically the third try I just did the first two episodes on my other YouTube so hope you guys enjoyed it. Know that this will get better over time and I'll see you guys next time.